Okay, in algebra, we started unit six, lesson one, and this unit is called intro to quadratic functions. And then I think that unit seven is just called quadratic functions. So this is going to be the main focal point for the rest of the school year, quadratic functions. And today we really just barely dipped our toe in. So we practice finding the rectangle with the greatest area. How do you find um, area of a rectangle? Oh, okay, good. So some people don't remember that. And then when they're testing you on like a different skill, maybe about quadratic functions and things like that. If you don't know the basics, like area is length times width, or that perimeter of any shape is when you add all the sides. If you don't know those like basic facts, then you're gonna miss that question because how are you gonna apply it? Even if you know quadratics and stuff, you need to know perimeter is when you add all the sides. Area of a rectangle is length times width. Okay, so then today we saw how different combinations of lengths and widths give you different areas, and we tried to find the one that would give us the greatest area. And we found that as the numbers got closer to each other, so let me pull up the notes real quick. I do not always like that algebra yet. But we found that as the numbers got closer to each other, that the area became greater. And it was the greatest when it made a perfect square. All squares are also rectangles. So like rectangles, the, the criteria is that they have four right angles and that their opposite sides are congruent to each other. So squares, also have four right angles and their opposite sides are congruent to each other, so they can also be rectangles. So that's what we're kind of getting you to. Why you might ask, well, you'll find out later on, but that's what we're leading you toward. Um, we noticed that when we graphed the length and the area, we saw that it produced like a U shape. That's very characteristic of our quadratic functions. So like how linear is a straight line, exponential either grows or decreases at a really fast rate. Quadratics are either down like a frown or up like a smile. So that's what we're kind of leading you to. It's very, very just easy. Um, so that was the goal of today was to be able to problem solve your way through making tables, graphs, recognizing that it increases, then decreases, like it's not consistently going in one direction, like we've seen before. <laughs> so you have a practice, and even if you haven't had algebra yesterday, I would like you to just try it. Of course, I can always help you if there's gaps yeah, missing from the lesson that you need resolved. Um, but also there's other things you can work on too. Like if you're through, if you're like, I'm going to wait till algebra so I can get the real lesson before I try to keep doing this. That's fine too. There's no lessons are all here. I'm holding you to that 80% or higher. If you have to do it on your own time, that's fine too. But um, I will give you back your exponent rules names. I've not finished grading them. So I'll I have my TA making a copy and then I'll grade from the copy so that I can give these back to you and you can continue working on them. This is a requirement. Like you have to do well on this. It's going in the assessment category for that. Which is fine, like you could redo it as many times as you want, but like I still have some kids that are resubmitting their math lib and they're still not getting full points. And like, I need to work with those kids to like make sure they know how to do that stuff, which is why I'm like, you can resubmit it as many times as you want, but that's what's bringing your grade down is you're not doing it or you're scoring low on it. So I'll make sure to give these back to you so that you can continue working on it. I imagine that you'll have a lot of time after you do this. Like honestly, like we had time in class to work on it. So I'm confident you'll have extra time to make sure that this gets done when I get back to you. 
um, resubmit it as many times as you want. You don't have to turn it in every day anymore just when you do more stuff on it. Now, I also have an extra credit opportunity also dealing with the exponent rules and it's a coloring worksheet, so it's kind of fun. And it's Valentine's Day theme. So to get the extra credit, you have to show work, have accurate answers, and then you can even get some extra extra credit if you color it accordingly. So it's like a almost like a color by number, but you have to have your answers and then you see which ones match. So like if I get the same answer for number one and the one that's labeled dark blue, then all my number ones would be colored dark blue and things like that. But it's mostly the work shown and the answers that can earn you some extra credit for this class. All right, so I'll leave this out should you want to work on it, um, but no like if there's a to-do list, you got to get 80% or higher on today's practice. Resubmit your maze and still have to get it back to you. But any extra time, I would want you to try for that to finish. So any questions? Okay, so then I'll let you get to it. Um, I will let you know I am going to be out for the next two days because I'm taking my two internationals in Anaheim. But you still have lessons to do in algebra. We'll still have a practice to try to get 80% or higher on in here. If you email me to reset something for you, to give you another attempt, I can give you another attempt. You can email me. Um, so you still have things to do, not just completely free time in here. And then you also have this extra credit that will be available to you while I'm gone as well. I don't feel like I need to make a seating chart for this class. I can tell you that for my other math lab section, I absolutely am, but there's just some not good behavior, like as far as people just socializing and not working or people cheating. Like those, like that's just like a non-negotiable. You can't do either of those. When you're in here, you gotta work and it has to come from your own brain. If you need help, I can help you. But if it's cheating, it's not allowed. Can't just get the answers from your friend. That will not help you on your future. So any questions on what we're doing? And I'll give you the time to work on it. So the value of a phone when it was purchased was five hundred dollars. It loses a fifth of its value a year. What's the value of the phone after one year? And then what about three years? I know we can recognize this as what type of function? It is exponential, um, but I think with this one, we're making a mistake that is pretty common. So what I would refer you back to is consider making a table. So we want to know for years one and three, so I'll just go up to zero to three, Year zero would be the starting amount. And we know it's losing a fifth of its value each year. So what is a fifth of 500? And that's what it's losing each year. So after one year, it's worth 400. Um, and then it loses a fifth of 400. So let me figure out what that is. If you know, you can say it. <laughs> but a fifth of 400 is 80, and that's what it's losing. So at year two, after losing $80, it's at 320. And then you'll want to do a fifth of 320. And then keep in mind that's what it's losing. So I got 64. And that makes it 320 minus 64, which is 256. So then the answer is after one year, it's worth 400. After three years, it's worth 256. And then I'll show you how to make the exponential function part. But that's from a table. That's me like problem solving my way through it. And it is right what I said. Um, but 
Here was the mistake in the exponential function part. You have to remember that we multiply by what it's keeping, not by what it's losing. So it started at 500 and it's losing a fifth of its value for each year. What's one minus one fifth? If I have five slices and I take away one slice, how many do I have? If I have five slices of pizza and I take away one slice, how many do I have left? So what I'm actually typing by each time is four fifths. You multiply by what it keeps, not by what it loses. Um, what it's losing, you subtract from the one. Very common mistake. So then if you made an exponential function, then you plug it in for when x is one and when x is three, but it would have to be this equation that you plug it into. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So still, even though like this unit is quadratics, we compare them a lot to exponential and linear. So, so we can't like use really those formula here. Um, any other questions? Number three. Number three says, here's some length and width of a rectangle whose perimeter is 20 meters. So remember rectangles, the characteristics about them is that the sides that face each other are congruent to each other, okay? And perimeter is the length around the shape or like all the sides added up. It has to equal 20. So like if my length is one, and it really doesn't matter if you put the one here or the one there, um, just side note, but um, if my length is one, then my width has to be nine, which that part was already filled in for me. But because when you add them together, it does add to 20. Now for the area, how do I find area of a rectangle? Length times width, so what's one times nine? Um, so that's nine square meters, but you just type in the nine. What's three times seven? <laughs> and now it has you where it's figuring out. Okay, well, if I have a length of five, and we're talking about a rectangle where the sides across are congruent, and it needs to add to 20 when I add up all the sides for the perimeter, then um, what does my width have to be? On your one person. So these, when I add them up, I get 10. We know that these two sides have to be congruent also. So what does the width have to be? Five, good. So really it makes a square, but all squares are also rectangles. So that is allowed. Um, my width is five. What's five times five? So my area is 25. Um, if my length is seven, what does my width have to be? And that was here earlier, so that was already paired. Same area. And if my length is nine, what does my width have to be? And then by that area, it is. So that's do that. Good questions on that. Questions on any others? Brady, number two. Okay, so we have to find a pair of numbers that have a sum of 50 and will produce the largest possible product. What does sum tell us to do? So when we add the numbers together, they have to add a 50, but then they have to give us the largest possible product. What is the product? So like it's the answer to a multiplication problem. So this is an answer to an addition problem. This one's an answer to the multiplication. So it's kind of like a puzzle. Um, but what we saw in the lesson today was that 
we were trying to find the largest possible area of something. And we saw that as the numbers got closer to each other. So like in today's lesson, it was 12.5 by 12.5. As the numbers got closer to each other, the area got bigger. So basically when it made a square is when it worked out the best. So they need to add to 50 though. So what are some numbers that add to 50? 25. Hold on. Is this the same from the note? Did we also have this in our notes with where it was like 50 meters of empty? So then it should match like the same answer. We already lived this in our notes. Um, was it 12.5 and 12.5 for the answer? Oh, because that doesn't add to 50, huh? Okay. Yeah, it was. Okay. So 25 and 25 is the next thing I'm hearing. Do these add to 50? And just like we saw in today's lesson, as the numbers got closer to each other, basically making a square, that gave us the largest area or the largest product. So I do think it is 25 and 25. This one to me, like I don't have a, a cool way of making an equation to solve it. Um, but it's kind of like a riddle and you have to use what you learned in the lesson today. Whereas the numbers got closer to each other, almost making a square, we had a bigger area. So questions on this? Questions on anything else? Okay, so make sure throughout the next two days, you make sure you get your practice done for whatever day it is. The details in the slides and not lab. And then also do resubmit your main and consider doing the extra credit. I'll leave the extra credit on the back of the email.